Be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Julie Abbott, uh, a daughter of our own congregation, who is the, is it the director or the executive director or the Grand High Poobah of St. Matthew's Area Ministries, who, okay. Executive director and CEO of St. Matthew's Area Ministries. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Before I get started with the Temple Talk, I need to ask a few questions just by a quick show of hands. How many of you have heard the word St. Ma'am? How many of you know what it actually stands for? Okay. And there is computers. <laughs> How many of you have heard the word community ministries as part of this city? Ooh, not as many. And if you were to guess, how old do you think St. Ma'am has been meeting the unmet needs of our community? Less than 10 years? 25 years? 45 years? 52 years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you heard me correctly. This weekend is our birthday, and we are celebrating our 52nd anniversary of serving this community. So I was so excited to be able to be asked to do this at this major milestone. Most nonprofits are not able to get that far. But we've been meeting the most basic needs since day one, February 2nd, 1972. Now back to the other questions for those who didn't raise their hands. St. Ma'am is our DBA and is our acronym for St. Matthew's Area Ministries. Now, did you know St. Ma'am is one of 13 community ministries that touch every single neighborhood and zip code throughout Jefferson County? Many of the community ministries have overlapping missions and programs, but only one mission truly unites each and every one of us. That mission, which might come of surprise, is the Emergency Financial Assistance Program. What does that mean exactly? Well, let me share a quick story. For years, I had watched a variety of people come and go from my office. However, one day before Christmas, I looked out and I saw a woman crying in her SUV just below me. In those moments, I was watching my phone ring. She was trying to connect with someone, anyone, at St. Ma'am. Through her tears, she identified herself, whom I will call Aurora, just to preserve confidentiality, and that she had never in her lifetime had to ask for help. Aurora told me her husband had just lost his job their second vehicle had broken down. She was not sure how she was going to pay her rent after Christmas, nor did she have gifts or diapers for her young children, and hardly any food remained to put on her table. In those moments, I knew God had placed her at our doorstep. Now, I cannot always make magic happen, but in this circumstance, we did. I invited her into the building and told her we would help her through this crisis. Any one of us, has been here, or could be here, or be an Aurora. Remember me saying above that the tie that binds the community ministries is the emergency financial assistance? Well, we are very fortunate that there is funding through a multitude of supporters. We re receive funding through Louisville Gas and Electric so that when a bill goes past due and turns brown, when you're painted on time, it's green, but it will turn brown. That is when the community ministries can intervene and provide electricity for an additional 30 days. Additionally, we receive other monies from Louisville Water Company so that we can assist when those bills are passed due. Finally, we collaborate with Metro Louisville government and other member churches and beyond to secure the rental assistance to prevent an eviction for at least 30 days. In the past two years, that particular funding for rental assistance has decreased tremendously, and we really need your help to continue to meet those needs with your own financial gifts. 
So now that you know one of our biggest missions, let me get back to Aurora. My Director of Family Services, Ms. Sarah, who has been with me for 13 years this summer, was able to pay the rent for Aurora's family. Additionally, we were able to prevent her utilities from being turned off by paying the additional 30-day extension, which provided extra funding for her to get that second car fixed at the mechanic. At Christmas time, we, ad we operate our Adopt-A-Child Christmas program and we're able to spread some Christmas magic by providing her with the necessary gift cards to go shopping for much needed clothes and toys. Through our infant and toddler pantry, we were able to provide her with the much needed expensive diapers, wipes, and other necessities. Finally, my food pantry coordinator, Ms. Suzanne, was able to provide enough food until she could come back after the holidays for another food appointment so that they would not be starving. To say she was shocked and in disbelief would minimize the extent of her feelings. However, I reassured her again, this is why we exist in this community. When I was young, attending this church, as you just heard, I'm third generation. My grandparents helped establish the church. My parents are usually here, and unfortunately, their health is preventing them from being here today. I would notice St. Ma'am listed in our bulletins and request items needed. Never in my wildest dreams would I have looked into the crystal ball to see that it is now encompassed over one third of my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The needs that were asked when I was a child are still just as relevant today and sometimes even more so in this post-pandemic world. Let me provide you with some of our numbers to finish telling our story and paint you a picture of our amazing supporters. In 2023, our amazing volunteers, we average about 80 every month, and there are four staff, two part-time, two full-time, including myself, including many of you who raised your hands, provided 1,186 hours of their donated time and energy to the cause. Through our partnerships with Dare to Care, our retail stores, our St. John family, and others in the community, the total contributed of food was 166,436 pounds. That is equivalent to 12 male African elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I was gonna paint a picture. 284 of our families received the food, toiletries, and cleaning supplies throughout the year. As Pastor Andy just mentioned in the children's sermon, many don't know that the toiletries, the paper products, the cleaning supplies, the things that we take for granted are not covered by the SNAP benefits, which is why there's been such a push in recent weeks and going through to our Super Bowl of Caring. This is an extreme need each month to offset household expenses. Put yourself as he did with the children if you didn't have soap or toilet paper or deodorant. It wouldn't be pretty. 158 of our families received those infant and toddler items such as diapers, pull-ups, wipes, baby shampoo, and lotion. 217 families were provided with seasonal help through our annual school supply program, Thanksgiving basket drive, and our Adopt-A-Child Christmas program. Pretty soon, it doesn't seem possible you'll be hearing about our Easter food basket drive here in the next two weeks because it's coming early this year. We helped prevent eviction for 71 families and they kept the water and the electricity on for 350 families. Reminder, the rental funding has significantly decreased. With your help, St. Mann provided 5,067 total services to our neighbors in need and our zip codes of 40207 and our portion of 40220. St. Mann only exists as an extension of our member churches who founded us over 50 years ago and continue to support us to this day in 2024. In this post-pandemic world, and many of you know me personally, we have actually survived. So many of our as so many aspects of our society are broken, and yet each of our staff, our volunteers, our churches, our community partners, and our donors epitomize Gandhi's quote of be the change you wish to see in the world. As we embark on a new year and a new chapter in our new location, we ask for your continued support. St. Ma'am has been through a lot in the past few years. 
I'm requesting that each of you think about how you can continue to be stewards of your time, talent, and treasures. I ask each of you to reflect upon this starfish story, if you haven't heard it before. A young man is walking along the ocean and sees a beach on which thousands and thousands of starfish have washed ashore. Further along, he sees an older gentleman walking slowly and stooping often, picking up one fish, often after another, and tossing each one gently back into the ocean. Why are you throwing starfish into the ocean, he asks. Because the sun is up and the tide is going out, and if I don't throw them further in, they will die. But mister, do you not realize there are miles and miles of beaches and starfish all along it? You cannot save them all. You cannot even save one-tenth of them. In fact, even if you work all day, your efforts will not make any difference at all. The older gentleman listened calmly and then bent down to pick up another starfish and threw it back into the sea. But it made a difference to that one. Without St. Ma'am, our community would not have their most basic needs met if it fell back upon these churches. The board, the staff, and I welcome each of you to take a tour and come see what we're doing firsthand. Let us continue to epitomize our slogan of pulling together for the next 50 years. Thank you so much. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So in the section of the Gospel of Mark that came before the one that we're reading from now, uh, Jesus, and we've heard this a couple times before, Jesus shows up in Galilee and he says, repent. That is, orient your mind around this, that the realm of God, in which everyone is able to feed themselves and have a roof over their head and good medical care and toothpaste uh, is close. Is close. It's not far away. So, last week we saw Jesus show us the realm of God in a very public and spectacular fashion. He's in a synagogue, a public gathering place, and a man comes in. He's possessed by a demon. Jesus rebukes the demon, and the demon roars as it comes out, and the man convulses, and everybody sees it, and the whole thing goes viral. Everybody looks on TikTok, and there it is. This week, Jesus comes to a house, to a private residence, not a public gathering place. What would happen if Jesus came to your house? And James, um, for Andrew and Simon, tell Jesus about Aunt Joan over in the corner, Simon's mother-in-law, who is in bed with a fever. Now, nowadays, if we get a fever, it's not that bad. We might be able to go to the doctor and get an antibiotic. But in those days, you were in trouble if you had a fever and you were laying in bed. And they say, can you look in on Aunt Joan? So Jesus goes over and he looks in on Aunt Joan. And he takes her by the hand. A personal thing. This is not spectacular. He doesn't rebuke the sickness. He doesn't make loud noises. Nothing roars or convulses. He takes her by the hand. Now our hands are very important. They are very personal. We have many kinds of hands. We have young hands and old hands, wrinkled hands and smooth hands, hands with thick, stubby fingers that are very strong and hands that have, are thin and deft. We have hands with calluses on them from work and hands that are smooth. All kinds of hands, beautiful hands. And when we care about somebody, we hold hands with them. And when we pray, we might clasp hands together. Hands are deeply personal. And Jesus takes her by the hand. Jesus also takes you by the hand. Takes us by the hand. And lifts us up. Same word here is the same word as is used when Jesus is raised from the dead. He lifts us up. 
When we get up out of bed, that's Jesus lifting us up. We are resurrected every moment of every day in our baptism. So what does this woman do? She's lifted up. She gets up and she serves. Right? So during executive committee meeting this week, we were looking at this Bible passage as we do look at Bible passages at committee meetings in the church here. And somebody said, wait a minute. Don't you think that Peter's mother-in-law could have taken a rest for the rest of the day? After all, she had a fever. Uh, maybe, maybe Simon could make the sandwiches for once. Huh? There are women always making the food for the men. Nah. And, uh, and it's true, this Bible passage has been used in the past upon occasion to say that this is a circumscribed and uh, appointed role for women to serve the men. And if you have... Listen to me preach a couple of times. You might not be surprised for me to say that that interpretation of this passage is, can you say it with me? One, two, three. Wrong. Wrong. Okay. So here's three things about the servanthood. First of all, presumably Jesus heals her completely so she doesn't need to rest. And maybe if she doesn't need to rest, she might feel like a lot of you feel when I come to see you and you're just beginning to get better and you're sick and stand, tired of being in bed and you can't stand it anymore, and you want to get up and move around, and the doctors and nurses are having a terrible time trying to keep you from getting up and moving around, right? Because you want to get up and do the things you're familiar with? Okay, yes. Yeah, maybe that's going on. Maybe she wants to do things, even though it's a circumscribed and limited role. That's her role that she has lived in her whole life, and she wants to do the stuff that she's familiar with and used to. Maybe. Number two, about this servanthood thing. When Jesus heals somebody, in the Gospel of Mark particularly, he doesn't just heal our bodies, holy and powerful and beautiful as all of our bodies are of whatever age or body type. He doesn't just heal our body. He heals our place in the community because that's part of who we are, right? We are fathers and mothers and sons and daughters, nieces and nephews. We are friends and citizens and human beings on this earth, and that means we are part of a network of relationships. He heals <laughs> our relationships. He puts us back in the places where we belong. And if you don't feel like you belong, come and talk to me. We're going to work on it. All right? Jesus puts us in the place where we belong, where we have purpose, where it matters what we do. And it sure matters what this woman does. Okay, because she gets up, and now she is presiding over the hospitality of the household. All right? Hospitality was a fundamental and non-negotiable value in Jesus' day. Should be now, it's not. And uh, she is in charge of it. Okay, so let's make this clear. The holy man, Jesus, who has just thrown out a demon in public and it's gone viral, he has come to your home. What would happen if Taylor Swift came to have dinner at your home? That's the level of stress here. That's the level of crisis. Taylor Swift has just walked into your home and you're going to have dinner with her, okay? That's where we're talking about here. And if, if the hospitality of the household, make no mistake, people are watching, then as now, it was a village, it's still a village, all right? People are watching. If the hospitality of the household is grudging and inadequate, then that will damage the honor of the family in the village. The honor of the family. So it will become more difficult to take out loans. It will be more difficult to engage in financial partnerships or to negotiate marriage contracts for your children. Serious business. On the other hand, if the hospitality is gracious and abundant, then everybody will be tweeting, what a great household. They treated Taylor Swift really well. You know? Now you'll be able to get loans better. You'll be able to make partnerships and marriage contracts more easily. It was serious business and she was in charge. She was in charge of the honor of the family in doing hospitality. Okay? Jesus restores us to our relationship. Number three. The word that is used here for serving is the same word that is used when the angels come and serve Jesus after he has been tempted by the devil in the wilderness. So she is doing the work of angels. She is wielding the power of angels when she serves. She's wielding the power of God. 
Because later on in the Gospel of Mark, and we heard this last week, Jesus said, the Son of Man, the one who embodies the presence of God in this earth, comes not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So she is a part of the realm of God that is as close as breath, that has come to us. She is drawing heaven onto this earth. Likewise, when Jesus lifts us up and we go out to serve, and we have all kinds of ways of serving. We have women who are physicians. We have men who change diapers. We have women who are physicians and change diapers and back the other way. Yes, we have women who fix cars and do the numbers at the business, and we have men who cook food so other people can have something yummy to eat. We are beginning to share our roles. This is a good thing. Nevertheless, whatever we do, whatever we do, when we do it because we care, because we want to be a part of the community, because we want to serve God, then we are bringing the realm of God into this moment, this time, this place, right now. Okay? So, you want to bring a piece of heaven onto this earth? Maybe it would be good to begin with a bar of soap. Thanks be to God.